you've been looking at the ASIC and looking at ways of reducing the ASIC. I mean, it's, I guess it's fairly standard. This, the, getting somewhere between $950 and $1,000 US dollars is where you want to be, especially in today's gold price. So you, you must, you're must you obviously throwing a lot off, off a lot more cash, but you've also had to finance a lot of the development work with debt. So I mean, what is the position on that at the moment? Well, um, uh, for the six months uh, to December, we've managed to de-gear the balance sheets. And we've guided that in the year ahead, we should see a dramatic uh, decrease in our uh, gearing levels. Um, you know, that's a, uh, a product of uh, the pillar now being into uh, coming into production. So we'll be steady state in the pillar in March. It's the product of Ilakulu perf- uh, performing at steady state and uh, of the uh, operations at Barberton performing. And then certainly what's helping us also is the uh, the gold price, both in dollar terms and then even more so in South African Rand, which is the currency that we look at. Yeah, okay. So if I may just touch upon this here, a lot of mid cap companies and large companies, they tend to borrow money, and plow it back into the ground, and they kind of forget about shareholders. You issued your first dividend for a couple of years recently what are your plans for keeping that going are you going to give back to whether well, long holding shareholders uh, in your company or is it the plan just to reinvest into the ground well i mean uh, so if you look at our sort of uh, priorities in terms of how we apply capital uh, we need to continue to invest in our assets um, but in the past we managed to do so and then also pay an attractive dividend um, you know uh, certainly up to quite recently, we were, we were one of the highest yielding um, gold dividend sh- shares in the world. And that's where we'd like to get back to. And I think uh, the operating environment in terms of the robustness of our assets and the performance and then also the gold price should assist us in, in, in resuming, uh, resuming even more attractive dividends in the, in the, in the future. Clearly, we have uh, still some of the debt that we uh, took on to fund Ilekulu that's still on the balance sheet. but. As I said, uh, we anticipate that number in terms of the gearing levels to come down quite dramatically in the year ahead. Any more, any more plans for any more debt? Well, no. I mean, there's no need for us to incur any more debt. Um, also, if you look at the sort of projects we undertake now, we uh, one obviously looks at all of the, the return metrics, including internal rate of return, MPV, etc. But um, payback is also very important for us. So, you know, how how long does it take us to get our money back? And that's where projects like an Ilakulu is so attractive, where originally we were, we were forecasting a payback of four years on, a, on $130 odd million. Um, and at this gold price, I actually expect the payback to be sooner. So those are the sort of projects we like to do. But again, it's just trying to understand the thinking of the management team here, because you've got options of you know paying it back in four years or paying it back quicker, paying dividends. You know, you, You've got the choice of what you do with that money okay so some companies like to be completely debt free as quickly as possible others like to maintain some kind of leverage and utilize that spare cash elsewhere to develop and grow the business i mean where's your head at well look i mean uh, our view is that mining companies should not be over geared and they should have a conservative level of debt and that's really where i think we will end up in the sort of next six months or so uh, it also doesn't make sense for us to have no debt in our view it's not efficient from a capital uh, allocation perspective. So, um, you know, we think that we can repay significant, uh, pretty much sort of all of our debt in the next 12 to 18 months and then resume dividends. So the one is not at the expense of the other. Okay. So dividends, they're, they're still in the pipeline. People, your shareholders will still be receiving dividends as you continue to develop the business and grow and grow the business. Perfect. Can we talk about something else, though? You know, you you did highlight them. I mean, you, you I, would, I would give you credit for this. You you don't shirk or or hide uh, from this. You've talked about a couple of things. There's been some community issues which has affected productivity, and also more recently some power issues. I mean, I know mining is mining and it's tough, but what has gone on there, and will that reoccur? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we have a demonstrated ability to operate successfully in South Africa. Um, we have had community uh, unrest, and that's affected, as you pointed out, to the Barberton operations in the last six months. Mm. Um, we had uh, very serious power issues with ESCOM, our uh, South African power utility, in December. 
On top of it, we also had probably the wettest uh, December in terms of rainfall okay. that I can recall for the last 20 years. So that also affected operations. So, you know, bottom line is I think one has to plan to have some level of disruption to your operations and you have to have robust assets that can withstand these sort of issues. Uh, and a management team that's proactive and anticipate when they can uh, and then deal accordingly. So, uh, yes, I mean, South Africa uh, gets uh, quite a bit, quite a lot of bad press, I think, in terms of the operating environment. And a lot of it is justified. But then, as you've said, um, you know, most mining jurisdictions have their issues. No, they, 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 they do. Like I say, and you know, I give you credit for not shirking away from it or ignoring it. But, you know, ESCOM, for instance, I mean, what was the issue? Is it going to reoccur? Because I look at, again, information that you provided, you know, the price, the prices have been going up and up. So which affects your margins. But how do you engage with them? How do you have conversations that gives you some sort of certainty about what the future looks like? Sure. Well, uh, ESCOM uh, has been more of an issue at our Evander underground business. Um, and fortunately there we have spare capacity. So, um, you know, we can afford to turn off a, a mill for a couple of hours if there's what is termed load shedding. So where the grid is overloaded. So, I mean, we do have that, uh, that capacity, but I, I think what you, and I think also uh, the ESCOM situation is not going to um, become any easier overnight. We will, continue to have power shortages in South Africa, probably for at least the, the, the next two years. Barberton uh, mines is less energy uh, intensive, so it's less affected. Elokulu doesn't use a lot of electricity, so that's less affected. Um, uh, but and unfortunately, as I've said, uh, at Evander Underground, we have some spare uh, capacity. We can, so we can afford to reduce our power consumption for a limited period. And recently, the, uh, the Minister of, of, of Mines in South Africa has, has come out to say that they are uh, in a process now of deregulating uh, the, let's call it power, uh, uh, private power generation. Um, at Evander, we're actually uh, completing a bankable feasibility study into mm. a solar plant that will be able to look after pretty much all of Elekulu during the daytime. Mm. And uh, we expect that we'd be able to, uh, over time, expand that project also. So uh, miners are being creative about finding solutions. And I think over the medium to longer term, we'll, we'll get those solutions implemented in a way that actually makes sense for shareholders.